While it wasn't pretty, Ravens certainly did not make it easy on themselves, but they came out of L.A. with the most important thing, and that was the win. Team Keep It Clean, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts on the game that we watched between the Baltimore Ravens and the Los Angeles Chargers. And before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we are very, very, very extremely close to 70,000 subscribers, and that is a crazy milestone. And I, I just got to say, I really appreciate y'all. I appreciate all y'all for being a part of that. So thank you for that. I love y'all. Subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on because while the Ravens are in the bye week now, we still got plenty to talk about. And one of the things we need to talk about from this game last night is coaching. Uh, this was not a good game from Jonathan Harbaugh. This was not a, a good game from Todrick Munkin. I don't even know if his name is Todrick or not. But anyway, this was not a good game from those two. Mike McDonald, hey, you you did your thing, baby. Hey, you, you, you did your thing. You were excellent, amazing, outstanding. Everything. So thank you, Mike McDonald. But John Harbaugh, Todd Munkin, we got to have a word. First, let's start with John Harbaugh. I know a lot of Ravens fans have been frustrated with John Harbaugh. A lot of Ravens fans have been talking about, oh, we want to get rid of John Harbaugh. Um, and, and I will question that. I'm like, well, hold up. Well, Ravens sitting there, they will be 8-3, and 9-3. and three. Ravens have this nice record, but there would still be fans that want to get rid of John Harbaugh. And, but a, a reason for that, a reason why a lot of Ravens fans get so, so frustrated with John Harbaugh is because he's been coach. Oh, no, no, not even just coaching overall. He's been head coaching. For what, like 14, 15 years, because he started head coaching in 2008. Um, but a lot of times he can make some rookie mistakes. Situationally, he has to get a lot better. But why are we having this conversation about a head coach that's been coaching so long that has to get better situationally? That's crazy, especially if you've been doing something for so long. But last night, oh my goodness, it was really bad. Uh, because last night, we know in the game, uh, the Baltimore Ravens, they started off, and again, shout out to the defense, but Geno Stone, there were, there were two no calls that uh, the, the refs did not call on the Ravens. They should have called on the Ravens. They were clear penalties on the Ravens, but the refs did not call them. Uh, one of them was Geno Stone hitting Justin Herbert on the first drive, uh, hitting him late out of bounds. It should have been a first down. should have been a 15-yard penalty, uh, unnecessary roughness, late hit, whatever, uh, but the refs didn't call it. So, okay. And then shortly after that, uh, there was uh, the Ravens had punted the ball. And Justice Hill, it was a clear, fair catch, kick catch interference, fair catch interference. I forgot exactly what it's called, but that should have been a penalty too. Refs didn't call it at all. So I said in our live stream, and shout out to everybody who's part of the live stream, I said that there's going to be two makeup calls that the refs give to the Chargers. So make sure you watch out for that. And guess what happened? We watched out for it, and it certainly happened. But this is where we have to have the conversation about John Harbaugh mixed in with Todd Munkin too. Um, because it starts with John Harbaugh, though, because there was a play where Lamar scrambled. He scrambled, and shout out to Lamar Jackson's awareness because he put the ball past the first down marker before he stepped out of bounds. So clear first down, right? But the ref said, nope. They took the first down away from him. They said, no, you didn't make the first down, Lamar Jackson. So I'm like, okay, so boom, right there, John Harbaugh should have been like, all right, challenge that. Clear first down, let's throw the challenge flag. Did he throw the challenge flag? No. But what made matters worse? is that the refs didn't give them a first down, which, again, that was one of the makeup calls to go in the Chargers' favor. Well, I'm like, okay, whatever. But there was no challenge. But then what made it even worse, Ravens made it hard on themselves. They, they ran a, a hurry-up play. They got back to the line of scrimmage fast. So it's like they, they started rushing, and then they, like, ran some, like, goofy play, and it's like, what are we doing? Why are you rushing for a play that you should have challenged? And they didn't get it. They, I think there was like a toss to Gus Edwards or something like that. And it's just, oh yeah, the, the the direct snap to Gus Edwards. That's what it was because they they put Lamar wide or something like that. And it. it's just like, what are we doing? What what was that? That sequence of plays was the, the sequence of coaching and the sequence. It, it was just so bad. It was all kinds of bad. And then the the next time it happened, it was on I think second and twenty two. Lamar Jackson dropped, and I forgot what the penalty was. Lamar Jackson dropped back, hit Nelson Aguilar. Nelson Aguilar clearly gets the first down. It's clear as day. Ref say, nope, because we still got one more makeup call that we got to give to the Chargers. So they took away the first down, so that made it like third and one or third and inches. Terrible spot. Again, John Harbaugh, throw that challenge flag. He's going to throw the challenge flag, right? Nope. They just watched it. And then, again, they rushed the play. And I, I forgot what I forgot what play they did, but it was something like abysmal. It was so bad. Um, so again, the Baltimore they they made stuff hard on themselves. They, they, those were two two challengeable plays. Those should have been challenged. But then later on in the game, to make matters worse, 
The Chargers, and again, I said this going into the game, the Chargers were a dangerous team because they had nothing to lose. When you play teams that have nothing to lose, they're willing to put it all out there. So Chargers on a third, and I forgot what it was, Justin Herbert throws one of his million passes to Keenan Allen. And Keenan Allen, he's like, look, I, I ain't about to get this first down. So he, um, he throws a, a lateral pass to... The running back, I think it was the running back, whoever it was, he throws the, the, the pass, to, he th does the lateral pass to another Chargers defender. And John Harbaugh challenged it. Live, it didn't look like it was a forward pass. Um, it didn't look like it was an illegal forward pass. Uh, and, but John Harbaugh, for some reason, said, oh, you know what? That looks challengeable. Not, not the, the bad spots that were clear first downs. Not those, but that looks challengeable. So let me throw my challenge flag. And I was just like, wow. What are we doing? So those were three terrible situational. Thank goodness. Hey, th thank goodness the, the, the Chargers are as bad as they are because against other teams, you cannot afford to do stuff like that. Not silly stuff like that. You really can't. But again, Ravens came away with the win, and that's obviously the most <laughs> important thing. Um, but yeah, they got to get back. They they need a bye week. <laughs> Har Harbaugh needs a bye week. Harbaugh like, look, man, I'm tired. <laughs> These games got me tired. We've been doing a lot of traveling. We've been going here, there, everywhere. I've been stressed out. I'm tired. So yes, Harbaugh needs a bye, bye week. Todd Munkin in this game. Mm. Todd Munkin. Now, with Todd Munkin, not everything is on Todd Munkin because the players, of course, have to execute as well. But with Todd Munkin, something that we saw in this game, making stuff harder than it needs to be, getting away from what's working, um, taking Keaton Mitchell out and on clutch situations. And ain't not, shout out to Justice Hill. But you, you got to continue doing what's working. In a clutch situation, like, hey, I'm I'm having Keith Mitchell out there, or Gus Edwards too. But I just they again they they just getting away from what's working, man. Ravens running games working, they like, oh no, we're gonna pass it. We and they the just the inconsistencies with the offensive play calling, uh, it was just frustrating to see uh overall. But again, it, hey, What's crazy about this is all this stuff that we're saying, it sounds like we're talking about a loss, right? It sounds like it, but the Ravens won. So it obviously wasn't all bad. And shout out to the defense because the defense in this game, they were amazing. They were outstanding. They were excellent. Again, whatever you want to call it, they were great. Um, they forced four turnovers. And, I mean, technically it was four. I guess it was really three, though, uh, because we remember right before halftime, uh, the Baltimore Ravens, they went for it. Again, uh, Lamar threw, threw a pass. It looked like it was intended for Rashad Bateman. It looked like he wanted to throw Rashad Bateman the first down and hope that Rashad Bateman would catch it and go out of bounds. It was just a pass that completely just missed, though. Completely missed. That gave the Chargers the ball right before halftime. Justin Herbert throws, throws it up. Uh, and Arthur Millette, he comes down with the interception. So that is technically a turnover. Um, but it was right before halftime. But, hey, it counts as a turnover, so it is what it is. But... The Ravens, they had three real turnovers, three real turnovers, and they forced three fumbles, and I think they recovered every last one of them, every last one. Um, and one of them came in such a clutch time. I mean, every fumble that you force and recover is great because uh, that literally takes the ball away from the opposing offense and gives it to your offense. Um, Jadavian Clowney, though. Jadavian Clowney. My, my guy, Jadavian Clowney, in the clutch. Clutch time. Chargers, I think the Chargers were in the red zone. If they weren't in the red zone, they were awfully close. And Jadavian Clowney, boop, knocked that ball out. And Michael Pierce recovered. And then on him, there was another fumble that the Ravens forced. And Michael Pierce, I believe, he recovered that one too. So the Ravens, they, they were knocking that ball out. And then there was another one where uh, Rodavian, Rodavian forced the fumble. Because it was Roquan Smith and Jadavian Clowney. And, and they forced the fumble. And the Ravens recovered. And I think that was on Keenan Allen. Yeah, because one fumble, it was, it was on the two ball guys. Because they, they forced one fumble on Keenan Allen. Then they forced another fumble on Austin Eckler. And then they forced a third one on Justin Herbert. So it was a beautiful thing. Seeing the Baltimore Ravens forcing fumbles. Justin had a big game. Uh, he had got a half sack. Uh, and that put him at 10 sacks for the season. Uh, so shout out to him. First player to get double-digit sacks for the Baltimore Ravens since 
T Sizzle. Justin Matabike, his money continues to increase. Oh, his money continues to increase. Patrick Queen. <laughs> Remember that play with Patrick Queen? He just so so devoted to being a good teammate that he just did not look out for the Ravens and did not look out for himself because he had a clear lane to the sack. Well, Patrick Queen said to himself on Twitter, he said, Oh no, I was just trying to uh I was really just trying to make uh, help Justin Matabike get the sack. So he, I guess he was supposed to occupy the offensive lineman and let Justin Matabike have a clear lane to rush through, but he was just so committed to the play, to executing the play and what they had designed that he was like, you know what, I, I ain't going for it right now. I'm going to let Beeks get it. Uh, but it was an incomplete pass, so thank, thank goodness it was. Um, but, yeah, shout out to the Baltimore Ravens defense. What's sad is that the, the Ravens, they forced three, well, technically four turnovers, but three turnovers, um, and they didn't get many points off of it. That is an issue. You you can't do that. Again, this bye week is coming at the perfect time. Ravens need it. But the fact that they're going into the bye week at 9-3, and three, that's amazing. Despite all their issues, despite them leaving so many points on the field, uh, despite the injuries that they've suffered, they're going into the bye week at 9-3. and three. That is amazing. That's amazing. All the traveling they've done, all the away games that they played, all, just all the games period, 9-3 and three is amazing. And I take that all day, every day. Because while it could be better, and it's been highlighted that currently, currently, the three teams that the Baltimore Ravens lost to, those are the three teams that are in the wild card spots right now. Again, that's subject to change, but those are three teams in the wild card spot right now. So all Ravens losses right now, they came to playoff teams right now. So, hey, that, that's that. Um, but... Where the Ravens are sitting right now, they, they are in such a good situation, man. Um, to be going into your bye week, to be able to rest, to be able to rejuvenate, to be able to relax, to be able to recuperate. Um, and you ain't got to worry. We ain't got to worry as fans. We ain't got to stress out this week, next week, because it's like, hey, Ravens ain't playing. So <laughs> y'all won't stress us out this week. But um, uh, that, that that's cool that they took care of business because a lot of times in these situations, uh, Ravens would not take care of business A lot of times when things would line up for the Ravens It's like oh man Ravens are sitting nice All they gotta do is win They wouldn't take care of business But this year um, It's nice that they are That it's, it's just It's a beautiful thing and, and it's very very nice To see the Baltimore Ravens Them hold it down um, And in the game yesterday Back to the offense who again? They gotta capitalize much better off of when like it should have been a blowout. The game should not have been that close. Uh, shout out to Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers got the double whammy, and I didn't realize those were his first touchdowns in America because his lone touchdown of the season it came in London in the game against the Titans. Uh, but these were his first touchdowns in the states. So shout out to Zay Flowers. Um, and his first touchdown. Again, Lamar, it, it, it reminded me of the Hollywood days. It reminded me of Lamar Jackson. We were just talking about that this week, uh, how Hollywood, you would think that somebody sitting at 5'9 would never be a red zone threat, but Hollywood was certainly a red zone threat with Lamar Jackson. Them two had excellent chemistry, but we see Zay Flowers. Uh, Lamar Jackson, he got it to him uh, on that goal line and on that pass into the end zone, so that was a, a beautiful thing to see. But then at the end of the game, I, I'm glad that Zay Flowers did what he did. I get it. Yeah, they could have ended the game um, if he would have just got the first down and went down. But I'm I'm glad that he got it because what that does for him, like that, that's it's it's deeper than just the game. It's deeper than just the Chargers game, in my opinion, because what that can do for Zay Flowers, that can set him up moving forward. That can give him a big boost of confidence uh, and motivation moving forward, especially heading into the bye week. Like Ravens as a whole, as a team, they set themselves up nicely heading into the bye week. But Zay Flowers individually, he set himself up nice heading into the bye week because he's like, oh, oh yeah, 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 I'm built for this. Even though I'm sure he knew that already. But that touchdown that he got, the second touchdown that he got, uh, it just set it up that much nicer. Again, he should have had the touchdown last week, but the refs took it away from him. So Ravens like, ah, right, you know what, let's double down this week. And he got it. He got it. Now on that play, he, he almost fumbled the snap. He almost, I mean, not the snap, but he almost fumbled the ball. But thank goodness he, he got it Shout out to them Florida boys But anyway um, Offensive line Offensive line in this game uh, Pass blocking Atrocious Atrocious um, I know there's been a lot of conversation about Ronnie Stanley And there will continue to be a lot of conversation about Ronnie Stanley uh, But yeah it's It wasn't looking good um, Both sides Khalil Mack was just abusing him 
Um, it was like I went into this game thinking, all right, they ain't gonna have Joey Bosa. So uh, yeah, they still got Khalil Mack, but like Ravens will be able to take care of business against him. Nope, nope. And something that's, I mean, it's no coincidence and it's no surprise, but um, the stats. When Lamar Jackson was pressured last night, he was two for 12 for 18 yards. So two for 12 under that pressure when he got pressured. When he was not pressured, <laughs> 16 for 20, 159 yards and a touchdown. Coincidence? I think not. Now, not saying that, hey, QBs, they, they just they can't perform. Um, and even just for Lamar Jackson specifically, not saying that, hey, under pressure, he's not going to be able to perform. No, not, not saying that at all. Uh, but you would definitely want your offensive line to be better. And, and just watching the eye test, you ain't even got to be no X's and O's guy. You ain't even got to be no offensive line specialist or anything like that to see that they were bad. They, they, were, they were really bad. Um, so it's the bye week coming at a perfect time. They, they need the rest. They, they need the, the relaxation time. They need the time off. Because, again, it's all about balance. We all need balance in our lives. Uh, we all need time off. And whatever it is that we do, we all need a break. Uh, and Ravens, they clearly need a break uh, right now. Everybody does. Uh, Lamar Jackson in this game, um, he, he was all right. He was all right. It wasn't, a, uh, a, it wasn't a, a crazy special game from Lamar. He did make some special plays, but it wasn't one of those, like, bam, those all right, hey, they, those statement games from Lamar Jackson in this game. But again, he did make some nice plays, and he, I, I think, on um, with Lamar Jackson, we are very spoiled. Uh, I know well, I can speak for myself. I'm very spoiled by Lamar Jackson because uh, of what he does and what he does on a regular basis, and he does some crazy stuff. There was one play where I forgot who the ball was intended for, but he did, and he does this a lot. To where he'll throw the ball, he'll do that sidearm throw, and it'll go like right around the defender, and to, and right into his receiver's hands, and it's it's like it's one of the craziest things. But he does it so regularly that we're just like almost used to it. But we still gotta appreciate it because it's still a special play. Um, Lamar Jackson in this game, just looking at uh, the overall number, there were some plays that he missed now. Uh, for sure. Now there was one deep ball. I know a lot of there been a lot of questions about Lamar Jackson and the deep ball this year. Um, there was one in Zay Flowers where he missed it, but it was a really good throw. It was a really good throw. It was like I don't even think he missed it. I think more most of Zay missed that one. Then there was another one where he was pressured, uh, and it was incomplete. It was intended for Dale Beckham Jr. Where it was a good decision, but that pressure made him just overthrow it. So, and that, that's what pressure's supposed to do. So, pressure's supposed to mess up the timing of your throws and whatnot. That's why teams want to create pressure uh, and get pressure on quarterbacks. And it certainly worked uh, with Lamar Jackson on that play. Um, so, hey, shout out to Chargers defense for that one. Um, but just looking at his numbers from the game last night overall. Oh, and he broke another record. You know, remember we was talking about that earlier this week? I, I said it feels like every other week Lamar Jackson is breaking some type of record. Because it's true, he is. Every other week, he's breaking a record. This week, he's the first quarterback or fastest quarterback to run for 5,000 yards. Faster than Vic, faster than Cam Newton, faster than uh, Russell Wilson. So, shout out to Lamar. But, yeah, 18 for 32, 177 yards, average 5.5 yards, throw, one touchdown, no interception. Now, um, <laughs> why those numbers aren't so pretty? Prettiest thing about those numbers, in my opinion, uh, and I think a lot of y'all will agree, no turnovers. No turnovers. He did not turn the ball over at all. Um, so that is a good thing. Now, he did have uh, one that he fumbled, and that was, again, I, I asked people the question um, because I know with Lamar, yeah, he has fumbled a lot this year. But it's important to look at the context of those fumbles. Some of those fumbles have come when he's running. So that's hey, that's all on him, in my opinion. Uh, but in, when he's in the pocket, a lot of those fumbles have come when he's in the pocket and getting ready to throw the ball. Getting ready to throw the ball, pulls it back, getting ready to throw it. Offensive lineman gets beat, and the deep defender, boop, knocks it right out. I feel like nobody, no matter what quarterback it is, can do anything about that. If it was Patrick Mahomes, and his offensive lineman got beat, and he's getting ready to throw it, and the defender, boop, knocks it out. Patrick Mahomes can't do nothing about that. Josh, well, I can't use Josh Allen because Josh Allen is a turnover machine. Uh, so he'll be a bad example to use. But anyway, you, you get my point. Uh, that's like you, nobody can do anything about that. 
Um, so that was unfortunate, but they didn't lose him. And, and that was a big thing with the Baltimore Ravens in this game. And I think that's a big part of the reason why they did win, especially because this is one of those games that we've seen a lot of times the Baltimore Ravens will lose. Um, but they didn't turn the ball over. And since they didn't turn the ball over, that allowed, even though their offense was very lackluster overall, um, that allowed them to remain in control for the most part of this game. It didn't, it did, they didn't put themselves in a hole. We'll, we'll put it like that. Um, that'd be a much better way to put it. Uh, running the ball, Keaton Mitchell, nine carries, 64 yards, 7.1 yards a carry. Keaton Mitchell is amazing. That's your guy. And he started in this game. So that says a lot. He started over Gus Edwards. He started over Justice Hill. Keith Mitchell, start undrafted rookie free agent in a game, a game you must get against the, an AFC opponent. Keith Mitchell was your starter. They love him, and we love him, and they got every reason to. Keith Mitchell is amazing. Um, Lamar Jackson had 11 carries for 39 yards. Zay Flowers, he had the one carry for 37 yards, and of course that was his touchdown on his jet sweep on his end of the round. So he said, Devin DuVernay, watch this. Um, Justice Hill had five carries for 31 yards, average 6.2 yards a carry. Gus Edwards, he had eight carries for 26 yards, he averaged 3.3. Ooh, and that's a very low average for Gus Edwards. And what the Chargers were doing, when, they, when Gus Edwards was getting the ball, they were hitting him. They were not letting him break tackles. They were all over Gus Edwards, all over. So the fact that he only averaged 3.3 yards a carry, not surprised. His longest carry was five yards. Five yards. Usually he averages five yards a carry, but his longest carry was five yards. So the Chargers were like, look, when we see 35, just hit him. Don't let him get nothing. And so they, they really held him down big time. Uh, Isaiah Likely was the leading receiver with 40 yards. Um, he had four catches for 40 yards. Um, but the thing I liked about Isaiah Likely in the game last night is that he looked comfortable. He did not look flustered. He did not look like the moment was too big for him. He looked very comfortable. And he was getting a yak. He was making people miss when he had the ball in his hands. And it was like, oh, yeah, that, that's the Isaiah likely we remember from preseason of last year when he would get that opportunity. So I, I look forward to seeing more Isaiah likely um, for the rest of this season. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr., he started off, had a couple of catches. Overall, he had three catches for 34 yards. Uh, but then he just got quiet. I just – we ain't see him no more. Uh, Rashad Bateman, he had two catches for 21 yards. Uh, his best catch of the night uh, probably came when he jumped He jumped up and got it. He reached up and got it. Uh, excellent effort on that catch. There was one that he dropped like right before that, and I appreciate it because I didn't appreciate the drop, of course, but Lamar went to him, threw to Rashad Bateman, and Rashad Bateman dropped it. It's like, oh, oh, unfortunate. But the very next play, Lamar Jackson went right back to him, literally right back to him, right back to him. And Rashad Bateman caught it. So that was nice that Lamar showed that trust in Rashad Bateman and gave another opportunity, like, literally uh, right away. So that was um, really, really nice to see. Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen, they both got over 100 tackles, uh, which is that's when the last time that happened for the Ravens. I don't even remember, but it's great. Um, Patrick Queen just setting himself up nice uh, to get paid, and he will get paid from somebody. Who? We'll see. We'll see very, very soon. Um, with Lamar Jackson, just to flip it back to the offense, one thing that I appreciated about this game, too, while they, did, they didn't turn the ball over, um, there were – oh, you know what? I was getting ready to say there, there, there weren't any almost picks, but there certainly was. There was on that um, – <clears throat> was it like a little bubble screen or whatever, RP, RPO, to uh, I think it was intended for – <laughs> it wasn't intended for Zay Flowers. It was intended for another receiver. But Zay Flowers, I think he missed his block on Asante Samuel Jr. And that allowed him to jump it. And it went right to Asante Samuel Jr.'s hands. Right in his hands. But he dropped it. Thank, thank goodness he dropped it. Ooh, ooh that would have been bad. But, oh, thank goodness he dropped it. Um, But, yeah, besides that, <laughs> there weren't any more almost turnovers. But, yeah, the Ravens did it, man. So we're glad that they did it. Glad that they were able to close it out, get a victory on the road again. Um, and now they have a bye week. And the next time that they play, they'll be at the crib and they will be going up against the former Odell Beckham Jr.'s team, the Rams. Um, but they ain't got to worry about that for another two weeks, which is nice. But anyway, team, keep it clean. Um, heading into the bye week, uh, we still got plenty to talk about. I know we will have plenty of questions from subscribers because I know y'all going to send plenty of questions because I know y'all got plenty of questions about these Baltimore Ravens. Um, but I'm looking forward to it, looking forward to a, a more relaxed 
weekend chan- well two weeks um f- for the Baltimore Ravens uh, and just around everything um because this is uh they need this we need this uh because this has been a crazy first part of the season but Ravens made it through and again they they are in a very very good spot record wise uh so shout out to them shout out to y'all again make sure you subscribe to the channel so close so close so close to uh to to 70,000 subscribers so if we hit that mark this week that will be a uh cause for celebration man uh but we'll see we'll see we'll see how it goes no rush we'll patience patience is everything but i love y'all team keep it clean i appreciate y'all so much thank y'all for making this so much fun uh there was a lot of wagon talk last night uh team keep it clean got got a little wild got a little bit wild but it's all good we had fun with it man but y'all stay up y'all be great y'all keep being amazing excellent people uh i will see you all throughout the rest of this week we got plenty to talk about uh but for now we out